We've talked about HTML as a markup language, and we use tags to mark, do the marking up. So now let's talk about HTML tags and exactly what they are. So what an HTML tag is, is a tag name surrounded by less than and greater than brackets. So you can see example here of the body tag. You'll see a less than and a greater than sign, and you will see a body, the, the word body inside of that. So body is the name of the tags, and then we put it inside of these brackets to denote that it is an HTML tag. And of course, different tags will have different names like a body tag, a paragraph tag, an image tag, etc. Now, normally HTML tags will consist of an opening and a closing tag like so. So you will have a tag with the less than and greater than sign, the name of the tag inside of it, and then to close that tag, you will put a slash in front of the name of the tag. And so what this denotes to the browser, tells the browser, is that anything inside of these two tags is marked up with this specific tag, and I want you to treat it a particular way based on whatever that tag is. Uh, and so inside of here, we're denoting that it is a paragraph tag. Now this, you know, this will especially come into play when you're you're dealing with CSS because we can then target these tags in our CSS, mean, and tell the browsers how to style specific tags. And we give, we can give uh, names to tags and so forth. Um, but this is the basic structure of what an H, most HTML tags will look like. Now there are exceptions. There are what are called void tags, and they are called void tags because they can't have any content inside of them. So syntactically, there's no reason for them to close because there's no contents to put inside them anyway. So a really good example, a common example of that would be an image tag. This is the full image tag that you would use in your HTML. You'll notice inside of this, we have a attribute, which we'll talk about in a second, which is source, which tells the browser where to find the image we want to display. But you'll notice that there is no closing tag on this. It is all just the opening tag. And that's all you'll put when you use this HTML. You will not put a closing tag with the image tag. That would be considered incorrect syntax. So this is what's called a void tag. And you will see some of these through, throughout HTML as, as you learn it. Now, one thing that you may see is something that's called a self-closing tag. And these are really a leftover from XHTML. And if you're not familiar, XHTML was uh, this flavor of HTML, and, and it still exists, but for a number of years, it was supposed to become the default HTML, the, the HTML that we all know and love and use, it was to become the standard. And it was a mix of XML and HTML. And the whole idea behind it was to make HTML a, a more strict language that followed strict standards. That sort of fell apart. And like I said, XHTML still exists, but HTML5 has come out and we no longer sort of follow those rules. But again, the self-closing tags are a leftover from H XHTML. And again, the image tag is an example of this. And what you'll notice is that we have our image tag as before, but on the closing bracket here, we have a slash before that. And the reason that was done is because X, or XML is a strict language and required every tag to be closed. But as I just explained, HTML has void tags where you have certain tags that don't have any need for them to be closed. And so they don't have a closing uh, tag for them. And so sort of the compromise in XHTML was what are called these self-closing tags like this. Now, for today's HTML, this is no longer necessary unless you're going to go into XHTML and actually specifically write that sort of code. But for the normal sort of HTML, this is no longer necessary. However, you may see code out there that, that still has this in it, or you may see coders out there who still use this and, and th that will, one, give you a sign of how long they've been doing it. Um, but it's sort of, again, just a left a leftover of this XHTML. So something you don't need to use, but again, if you see it, don't get freaked out by it. You can simply remove that closing slash and use it like a normal HTML tag. All right, so let's talk about attributes. So HTML tags can have 
attributes that further describe how the element should be displayed. And so the basic structure of the attri of attributes is as follows. So you have the name of the tag, and then you'll have a space, and then you'll have the name of the attribute, an equal sign, and you can have double or single quotes, and then you will have the value of that attribute. So if we look at our image tag, this is actually a good a good example of that. You can see we have IMG, which is the name of our tag for image. Then we have SRC, which stands for source, and then equals and myimage.jpg. So what this does is it tells the browser for this image tag, where you're going to find the image is at myimage.jpg. Now this is what's called a relative path. So the browser will look wherever, whatever URL you happen to be at. So if you're at google.com slash about, and then you put you were to put this image tag in here, the browser would look at google.com slash about slash myimage.jpg for that uh, image file. Of course, uh, you know, that may not be exactly how you want to structure uh, your site. So you can use what are called absolute URLs where you actually put in the full HTTP address of the image here. And when you get into CSS, then that, that of course changes it a little bit too. But again, the basic idea of the attribute is that you can add attributes that further tell the browser how they should display this particular tag. Now the last thing that I want to talk about are what are called elements. And so you may have heard me use this term element as we've talked about all this. And an element is essentially the HTML tag and the content inside of it. So it is the, the full sort of tag. We refer to these as elements. So if you can see in the example here, we have the H1, which is a, a header heading tag level one. So we have that opening and closing tag. We have our content inside of that. That full tag and content is, is referred to as an element. So when someone says element, this is technically what they're referring to. Although you will find, and I am certainly guilty of this, that people often refer to tags and elements a bit interchangeably. But it's important to understand what an element is, again, especially when you start dealing with CSS, because when you target elements inside of CSS, that's something you'll hear uh, a decent amount, that generally is being said in the technical sense, and we're describing not only the tag, but also the content inside of that tag.